Unforgiveness is like cancer. It eats you from the inside out. Ryan and Laura had moved to the Republic of Georgia to serve the Azeri Muslim people in the Caucasus Mountains. So the kids called on my birthday, the uh, first of July, and we, they were singing happy birthday, and we Skyped and had a fun time. And he said that they were going camping. So they went camping uh, in a gorge that's quite famous for backpackers. And they were going to be hiking to this waterfall that their friends had received pictures from them as they were going up the gorge toward the waterfall. And uh, they never showed up for dinner. They weren't answering their phones. So when they hadn't shown up until late in the evening, their friends called the police and reported them missing. And uh, the next morning at daylight, the police went into that gorge looking for them. A young man, a 19-year-old shepherd, had told uh, the police that he had seen them on the trail and had uh, led them to the waterfall that most people uh, went to and that they had shared their lunch with him and then he'd gone on to a shepherd's camp. But he said, I'll check that area because I go by there you know, on my way to the camp. So he was hiking up toward the waterfall to go on to the camp, his camp, and uh, he called the police and said, I found the woman's body in the waterfall pool, but they can't find Ryan or Caleb anywhere. And so the next email came in, I clicked on it and I glanced at it and two words jumped right off the page, triple murder. Well, my brain literally just exploded. And then I read the rest of it and found out that it was the shepherd that had been arrested and he had taken them to where he had buried Caleb in this ice, ice cave. And also in that ice cave, besides Caleb, was Ryan's camera, which he had purposely smashed on rocks, etc. But the chip was still in there because yeah, I guess he didn't know about that. And it had pictures of him and incriminated him in the crime. And when they arrested him, uh, he confessed to shooting Ryan and Caleb, but he never ever mentioned Laura, other than to say she fell into the ravine and died. But in reality, that's why he had murdered uh, Ryan and Caleb, because he wanted to rape Laura which he did, and then drowned her. And I can hardly wrap my head around the idea. It was bad enough that they were dead, but triple murder was just horrific. And we chose to stay at the beach house and, um, after we got the horrible news because it was Ryan and Carol, their favorite place to be. And it was a place of peace for us as well. And I wasn't ready to face anybody at home our neighbors, our church friends. I just need to be by ourselves. It's draining day after day. And when I'm reading the details of Kabari's confession at that time, my heart is just getting hard and the anger is just consuming me. So I realized quite quickly I had a big decision to make. Was I going to allow Kobari's murdering our family to consume me? Or was I gonna forgive him so I could maintain my intimacy with God when I needed it the most? And choose to say, God, heal my heart, heal my heart, and bring me to the place that I could be like Ryan and Laura. And so, within two days, I made that decision to forgive him and to choose not only to forgive him, but something that I have been teaching for a long, long time is that when Jesus died on the cross to pay the penalty for all of my sins, he paid the penalty for every sin of every person who will ever live, including every person who sinned against me including Kabari. Jesus had already paid the full penalty for the horrific things that Kabari had done. And if I was unwilling to forgive him, I am saying, I have a higher standard than Jesus does. 
if I won't forgive him, I am saying, you owe me, where in reality, I owe Jesus because of what he's done for me. And when we went to Georgia in August, there's a unanimous conviction of three murders and a rape. And then he was sentenced to life in prison. And because I had forgiven Kobari and had sincerely prayed for him and his family, his family were innocent victims, just like we were. When I sensed that God was saying, I want you to write him that you have forgiven him and why, and then sharing with him how he can experience that forgiveness in himself and peace with God. I shared with him that there are three men in scripture that he probably had heard their names, Moses, King David, and Paul, the Apostle Paul. All were murderers, and God chose to use them for, as his spiritual leaders, and to impact the world and that that's his option as well. He can experience the same forgiveness and have the same impact if he would be willing to repent of his sins, accept Jesus' death, to pay the penalty of his sins, and yield himself on a daily basis to Jesus. So it'll be interesting to see, whenever he gets the letter, how he responds. And we'd also arranged for him to receive a Bible through the crusade staff there in Georgia that we've gotten to know. And um, so the letter and the Bible are waiting for him at the U.S. Embassy. And I'm just so, so grateful that I learned how to forgive, not just the horrible things that Kobari did, but the pain that he's causing us. And not just a one-time forgiveness, Day after day after day after day, something comes up. I had no idea there were so many boys named Caleb. I can be in a grocery store and I hear a mom calling for Caleb. Well, needless to say, I start crying. So I have to forgive him again for just all these daily painful things that happen. I have to forgive that pain for that day, that circumstance, that loss. And I was surprised how many of the women had lost son in an accident or a drug overdose or a suicide or an illness or whatever two, four, five, eight, ten years ago. But they're still in that place. They are holding on to anger and unforgiveness and loss in an unhealthy way. You know, unforgiveness is like cancer. It eats you from the inside out. And it poisons your relationship with other people. Anytime I go there, and if I stay there very long, it's depressing. And I would explode on innocent victims because that anger was inside. And it was like a volcano. You could never tell when it might erupt. And I just, my heart breaks for these women. And so that's another reason um, I shared the letter I'd written with Kobari and made it available to anyone who wanted a copy. And it's had a life of its own. It's going around the world, apparently. And I'm just grateful that I learned how to forgive. And the peace that I experienced, the presence of God that I experienced, the power of God that I experienced was incredible. And I'm just seeing God use this horrible, horrible tragedy for good in ways I never would have guessed.